You, it, it feels like it just came out, but you dropped We Already Won back in February already. And then yeah. just like a month later, you announced the signing <laughs> to Atlantic Records. So I know, I know these things yes. generally take time when you're signing a label. So how far back did the signing actually happen or did it literally happen right after the album dropped? Yeah. Oh, so uh, Hard Work Out First was going crazy on social media and there was a lot of people resonating with it. And then after that, we did Blessing Chosen and God Had Other Plans. And both of those really also struck a chord with the fans. And God used that opportunity, kind of the momentum building, uh, the sound that I really was leaning into that felt the most authentic to me. And um, we started to have some interest from different parties, uh, you know, partnered with new management and then started to talking uh, with multiple labels. And then the Atlantic conversation started kind of around the end of the fall so like right before we went on tour right we were actually flying out to have the initial meeting with atlantic and kind of hear them out talk through our vision and our heart and a big priority for me was partnering with the team if we signed to a major who's going to be clear that like we don't compromise we represent jesus of nazareth we're bringing the movement to the people yeah and atlantic was on board they believed in the vision they understood the business aspect and the ministry aspect of what we do and then we ended up negotiating for months to kind of come to a deal that I felt great about. And again, I'm super grateful for that opportunity. And BEC Recordings, who I released We Already Won with and Stonebrook Project with, I got so much love for them. They're incredible. And uh, I wouldn't be here without them either. We were in a conversation and Brandon, who's the owner of that label, was like, look, man, this Atlantic thing's on the table and I want you to win just like you've always wanted us to win. What if we just, even though there's two years left on the contract, what if we just put in a 20 track album now, I release you from your deal so you could go sign with them and wow. then you and I can work on other stuff. And I was blown away. That was like, whoa, like that was so kind of him. But also it's just God aligned. You can't make that stuff up. That doesn't happen. So then I was like, all right, bet. We're going in the studio. And for six days, other than the singles that were already out, the entire 20 track record, we made it in six days at an Airbnb and studio sessions every night. <laughs> Me and my team, Invincible Art, we put in the work. The Holy Spirit showed up and did the rest. And then that music uh, ended up being the anthem for a lot of people. We dropped that. And then the announcement with Atlantic came out shortly afterwards. And uh, we're going to start releasing music with them very soon. Yeah, man, that's crazy. When you say Brandon, Brandon Ebel. Uh -huh. the, Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, uh, the legend. He's incredible, bro. He's a great guy. And he's a hustler and an entrepreneur. And I'm honored to work with him on that side putting out those albums and uh, him and I are going to work together on other stuff. Okay. So how, how is that going to work though with Atlantic or are you not there yet? Oh, I, I ended my relationship with BEC recordings and I'm completely now signed and partnered with Atlantic records. Um, if Brandon and I work on anything, it would, it would be in another aspect of music, but with Atlantic um, we're stepping into this new season. Like, okay, what are we rolling out for a single? And then what's coming after that? It's kind of a clean slate. We're letting the fans eat off of the 20 songs and yeah. they're living life to it. But we've already made and we're sitting on like almost 50 songs at this point. Wow. OK. OK. So but what's that like, you know, putting out a project? <laughs> all Listen. I do, bro. All I do for real. Is <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what's that like putting out a project, though, and then leaving the label? Because generally you have a label's trying to push a project, but you're gone. And then is yeah. Atlantic showing any love toward the project you just dropped because they don't, you know, technically they don't have a piece of it. So how does that kind of dynamic work? Seems interesting. Bro, I'm telling you, this was designed by God because I'm, this is not a music industry standard thing at all. The fact that it worked out this way blows my mind still, but that's where it's like, okay, confirmation, God is moving, it's supposed to happen. BEC put out this album with me. And they were like, look, we know that Atlantic is going to bring a lot of new eyes and those fans will also stream this music. So we're going to put everything that we can into supporting you to the best of our ability. Then Atlantic said, look, we know that this music is building fan base. So we love every song that you put out. We believe that you can make more songs that are going to resonate with this audience and we can help you supplement that. So let's just start clean slate, make a bunch of music and then lean in on promoting and building a rollout for all of that music. So God worked it out where it just, continued my story chapter by chapter yeah. and i'm in a whole new season man god's superstar is here yeah man that's that's not supposed to happen so it, it's it, only happened, him. it happened it happened for a reason yeah all right let me ask you about this so on the atlantic records announcement post interesting reactions 
of course, mm -hmm. as you're always expecting. I saw lots of love from CHH artists, you know, Bizzle, Dayton, any artist you guy. can you could imagine. Uh, but then there was a certain segment that was so worried about you selling out and compromising, which which is unfair because like literally mm -hmm. nothing happened yet, right? Like yeah, exactly. you didn't you didn't do anything to give any people <laughs> pause. So I know what you're telling me already so far, but uh how does how did that make you feel? And then how could you reassure the Zonti mm. fans that your mission is completely the same? Yeah, I really love that, man. And I appreciate you paying attention to this stuff as it's part of the journey. I feel yeah. like when I started back in 2017 and we put out God Taught Me on Rapzilla and we had that moment that began the journey, my mission was to make music people want with the message that they need. And I believe that if I showed up and was faithful with the art, God would bring the people who need it. Obviously, there's going to be people who don't need it and they don't necessarily understand it. But the people who need these songs, these messages, this look, this sound, they're going to resonate with it and it's going to draw them closer to finding Jesus. And that's my ultimate goal. So yeah. when I saw people who didn't understand, my heart was just, look, I'll just keep showing up and control what I can control, which is my actions. And uh, I believe that the people who are meant to join the movement, they'll see over time, you know, a tree by its fruit, right? So all I can right. do is just show good fruit. And if I don't show the good fruit, then we can have a conversation about did he compromise? But if I'm just representing Jesus to the best of my ability, you know, that's all I can control. So I don't worry about what people say. And also, man, I mean, my generation is tired of seeing their favorite rapper killing it. And then all of a sudden throwing up 666, yeah. showing one eye, wearing a dress, right? Like we're in a situation now where we have to be bold and say, I'm going to show it's possible to be in the music industry, in the world and not of it, that I'm going to bring Jesus into every room that I'm not going to compromise. I want them to know it's possible to win and win for Jesus, do it big and do it big for God so that every artist coming up after me keeps that hunger and doesn't compromise because there's so many great creatives who sell out because they think it's the only way. We got to show them it's not. Right. No. Awesome. Great answer. And, you know, I, I mentioned Dayton. I know a few years back you did a tour with Dayton, yeah. Um, which, you know, at the time when you think about it, you see the bill, especially like younger you was like Zonti and Dayton. Like that's that's an interesting mix. And yeah. he told he told me he was like that you were one of the most real and solid and about that life artist that he's ever been around. So uh, we so you can hit him up and just say thank you with no context. Um, but we <laughs> we we see you posting the vids, praying with people. You you just did one before the call, you know, yeah. praying with celebrities, most notably, you know, that Bobby Schmurder video. So. Mm -hmm. I know for you, this is not just about the gram. You're not just posting these pictures to kind of say, look what I'm doing. But like, how are you seeing God work through these opportunities and, and these relationships that you're building? Like what's, what's kind of the immediate impact that you've been seeing? Absolutely. Well, the most immediate is, um, I mean, even on this last trip, there were people who received Jesus and my heart is that that falls on good soil and it becomes a seed that bears harvest. But I'm in text conversations and following up with these guys, sending them Bible verses, answering their questions on faith, plugging them in with the church that's local, awesome. that I trust. So my heart is to see these guys change for Jesus. And it's going to take time. Obviously, they're so used to a lifestyle that they've been in. So I have grace for yeah. that. Um, the reason that I'm posting it and the, the results that I've seen from it is there are kids who are the only Christian in their school or on their basketball team or even in their family. And they're like, man, if Z can go around all these people who, you know, have a following and are very obviously living a lifestyle different than what Z is living mm -hmm. and he's not compromising and he's actually praying for them and speaking the name of Jesus, maybe I can do that in my environment. That's the whole God superstar thing, man. When I say I'm God superstar, we're supposed to shine like stars in the universe, right? We're supposed to be a light, right. a city on a hill. And the whole point is if God can use Zonti, he can use you, right? So you're God's superstar. You're using it right now, dude, you're doing it. You're using your platform to impact people and make a difference, right? Yeah. I want everybody who sees what I'm doing, this is why we document it, to feel the courage to go do it in their environment. And we started to get those testimonies in the comments and DMs, in our text community, People like, hey, I feel the courage to witness at my school or at my job because I'm seeing you in these environments. And really, that's all it's about, man. The Great Commission. We're just supposed to bring Jesus to the ends of the earth. Yeah, no, that's great, man. And in that, again, referring back to that last post, somebody somebody wrote in the comments, you know, be careful, Z, you're in a room full of wicked people. And I actually commented uh, back from Rapzilla and said, and said, no, they're actually in a room with God's son. So, with the, son, oh, with the son of the father, 
Let's so go. They are the ones that need to be careful. Oh, that's, on. that's what you're trying to convey. Come on, man. That's my dog right there. That's so, a, you know the picture of Dwayne Wade and LeBron where he's like yeah. that. Come <laughs> yeah. on, bro. That's we got you. we got you. You know, because we see this all the time on the artists, artists getting roasted or killed for something that they didn't even do. Yeah. You know, it's it's people make those assumptions. So sometimes you gotta be like, yo, like you said, just watch the fruit. If you start doing something out of line, yeah. trust me. We'll all be there to say you're doing something out of line. I'm 100% sure you will, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's that's kind of the job that, that we're all supposed to do. As Christians, um, man, forget what we do and what area we're in. It's, it's holding each other accountable. That's why I also don't get irritated. There are people who genuinely are trying to do their yeah. due diligence and be like, they hey, mean see, well. They care, right? Yeah. They mean well. And so I'm just like, look, I, I appreciate it. I'm just going to keep doing what I can control, like I said earlier. And also accountability is huge, man. Like my socials are logged in with multiple team members. I travel with at least two guys with me who are filming and praying and walking with me everywhere I go. The goal is to represent Jesus without scandal, without fail, without controversy. I'm trying to live this lifestyle because that's what Christ has called us to, to live as Christ and to die as gain, right? So I'm really trying to set a precedent like, I want you to know it's possible to make it to that finish line. I, I run towards the finish line, yeah. like Paul talks about. And uh, I think that accountability is also, I got people in my circle. The moment that I'm out of line, you know, I'll do stuff that maybe the rest of the world doesn't understand because it's my calling and it'll yeah. get explained later. But if I'm ever doing anything that's outside of the center of God's will, I got people who will check me right away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I got people who love me and aren't yes men. And that's painful at times, but a wound from a friend's better than a kiss from an enemy is what the Bible says. So I'm grateful for that, you know? And, and shoot, you were talking about Dayton earlier. I was actually on the phone with him a few days ago. He's one of those guys, you know, who's in the community and he's in the comments standing up because he knows the character. But the moment that I stepped out of that character, he would say something, you know? Um, yeah. And there's a lot of people like that, that I can trust to hold me on the path so that I can continue to be God's superstar. Bro, Dayton's the best friend you could have because if people are coming at you in the comments, you don't even got to reply. You know Dayton's already <laughs> sliding in there. That's <laughs> <There, bro. laughs> oh, I'm about to get to a fight. Yo, let me call my boy hey, Dayton. <laughs> for real. Hey, bro. And they talking again. He's straight up a battle rapper, too. You know he does not have trouble when it comes to defending yeah. something. Yeah. Let, let me ask you, because I'm getting distracted. In the background, you got your calendars. Oh, yeah. Those, what so what what's the story is that your whole year planned out already mm -hmm. absolutely most of it so we're very calculated um i'm up here in this upstairs office every day that i'm not on the road and we're planning out you know posting we're planning out travel and studio sessions and albums and projects and tour and all that stuff so i just i run this like a business i i want to be very um i want to be a good steward with what god has handed me so yeah. I just try to be as calculated as possible. I think a lot of the mainstream relationships that we've been building in management and the label side, they're kind of blown away because they're used to artists who don't handle it like this. And we get to be a good witness. Like, no, we follow Jesus and we're locked in. We're focused. We're intentional. We're showing up on time. We're putting in that work. You know, in sports, that was always uh, what would give me opportunity. And so I've applied it to music. Yeah. So. Also, what you're saying is for the for the zealots that are watching this, if they kind of zoom in, they can kind of <laughs> yeah. get a sneak peek of what you got going hey, on. It's right here, man. We're, if you're really going to take the time, screenshot it, zoom in, you deserve that information. <laughs> there's, there's, breaking, there's breaking news behind Zonti right now. Somewhere, right? It's like an Easter egg. <laughs> they got to go find it. All right. So you said you, you got a whole bunch of music already oh, yeah. kind of in the clip, ready to go. What can you tell us? about that music you give us give us a little something a little something yeah i i truly believe and i've heard other artists talk about this there's something fun about being a creative where kind of your newest thing is always your favorite because you're always like in that moment if you're creating authentic art you're going to be most excited about it the songs i've been working on is some of my favorite stuff that we've ever created because um i don't know i'm just pushing myself and god is showing up and giving us wisdom on this art um, the best way I would describe these songs is like the perfect blend of hard work, God first and oxygen, if that makes sense. Okay. And I feel like God is going to use that sound to be a very different sound that doesn't exist in the industry yet. 
um, where I can use my, you know, background leading worship and my vocals and that rock star persona. I love, you know, always like watching YouTube concerts and seeing Bono uh, and his charisma and his performance. So like it brings some of that element and the gospel sound, but it also brings uh, the hip hop sound that I love and kind of puts them together. And uh, also there's some stuff that's closer to like blessed and chosen and hard work God first, you know, it's kind of, that's the middle ground. And then the other categories are, you know, some of it's more rap, some of it's more singing. The bottom line is I'm just talking about my life. I'm trying to continue to be an example. Like everything that I've walked through that's difficult, you know, everything that I've walked through that's victorious. I just got to show other believers and people in the world, regardless, listening to this music, I want to give them anthems to live life to, you know, at the end of the day, as a musician, I'm giving people a soundtrack for their most intimate moments. So that's what I'm always thinking about with these songs. And and we've just been creating it at a high volume because I'm so full of stories and things I want to talk about right now. So God has really just put us in the creative zone. That's dope. I feel like we just got a a really cool snippet where it's like, what are Zonti's influences? And it's like rapper, rapper, Bono. And (laughs) you just kind of have Bono in there. Wasn't expecting that one. Um, yeah, that's literally that's, my that's cool, collaboration, man, would be doing a song with Bono. Um, I just feel like what he's done in music while still following Jesus, um, it's so inspiring. And uh, I feel like I relate to him in a lot of ways when it comes to his performance and personality. So, you know, I'm, I'm ready to do the same thing for my generation. Okay, so what we got to do is Instagram collab this clip right here. <laughs> Hope right. That, Everybody hope tag. that clip blows up. Everybody tag Bono, Absolutely. and then, and then we'll we'll reconvene for another interview after that. <laughs> that uh, sounds good. <laughs> uh, so one of my guys uh, from the Rapzilla team, Q, he wanted to ask: Was there ever a time that you felt too far gone from God? Absolutely. And if so, when was that moment that you really felt God move and work in you and through you? That's really good, man. I've had two seasons that I really um, can think of off the top of my head. One of them I talk about in God had other plans. And that was kind of like the season of, you know, 2020 to like 2021, right before Stoneberg project started happening. Um, And then the other one was growing up. So my testimony is I grew up in church. Um, I always loved Jesus. I grew up listening to Christian music. My parents were pastors and I was on fire for him. Um, Even in times of struggle, I knew that I could count on them and I could count on God. Right. And then I went through this season where I realized, you know, being bullied, being left out, being counted out, that people treat you very differently when you're trying to do the right thing, especially your peers. And uh, it broke me in that season. I was like, man, fine. You guys are going to treat me this way. Well, I'm going to find the people you think are cool. I'm going to go find the girl that you can't get her number. And I'm going to show you that I can do this. And uh, I spent, um, you know, those years in high school largely chasing identity. I was trying to be accepted. I was trying to be cool, for lack of a better word. And my mom found out how I was living and she got really serious. And she said, in 10 years, you'll know Jesus when you're ready for an answer, but they don't have that solution. So you're watching them drown. And I saw this visual of like, I'm on a a life raft and I'm putting my leg in the water to feel more accepted, but they're physically drowning and I could help them, but I'm watching them drown. That woke me up and I started to represent Jesus in my day-to-day life. And what was amazing to me is people who I never thought they started calling me and saying, how do I find God? I can't go to church. I don't know a pastor. Can you pray with me? Somebody calling me from jail, like, hey, I want to receive Jesus and I want to turn my life around, right? So I'm getting these opportunities in my personal life and music was my passion. And that's when I made the decision, all right, I'm going to steady the game. You know, Rapzilla 2017, I'm going to bleach my hair. I'm going to wear bright colors. I'm going to do this music video on the beach and get the music out there. But the messaging will be what I learned in my personal life being on a basketball court, being in these environments that I was in at the time. And that walking away from God, he protected me and allowed my testimony to continue in the direction that he had called it to be in. But he used that time frame for me to understand, like, if you're authentic, authenticity is culture currency. I got to show that to every kid out there. I got to show that to the world. My generation needs to know that you'll get more respect if you're bold about Jesus. I was just in a studio in Houston, Texas, and there was a lot of things in that room And there was a lot of things going down. And I was the one representing Christ. And you saw the prayers, the salvation, the moments where the Holy Spirit shows up, because that's what we're called to be. We're called to be the light of the world. And exactly like your comment reply, where there's light, darkness can't coexist, right? And I think in my career, even the lull that I had where, you know, everything was getting canceled, all the shows were shut down, 
you know, yeah. my previous label relationship ended and, you know, my brand at the time had been changed and it wasn't exactly what I thought it should be. And I didn't have creative control and I'm wrestling all this stuff and feeling the depression of it. Like, man, like I was, I was in that zone. I was killing it. And now God, I'm on the sidelines. Why am I here? And I was frustrated, but I realized the Lord was giving me all the stories I had to live through so that I could inspire the generation and say, look, if I've survived this, you can too. And that's where my phrase that I say on stage comes up. You have stories only you can tell, gifts only you can give. Your survival is proof to someone else that they can make it. And that's when I started working on Stoneberg Project. Like, all right, all of these songs, the pain that I've walked through, I'm going to put them into music and, yeah. you know, have somebody else songs like, I'm sorry, have somebody else, you know, at least like, don't let my pain be for no reason. Let them know God has sustained me through it. And then we already won was the victory of like, I made it to the promised land. I can see the finish line from here. I can see where you called me to go. Everything that I survived now, man, you're a great God. You're magnificent. You're worthy of my praise because now I know how far I've come. And now I just, I'm walking in like rest. The city's yours. I'm not compromising. Awesome. And that's where I think about with this music, man, God has called me to do it. And, and the moments that I was away from him, he used to bring me even closer. Yeah, man. Phenomenal. And, and this, this boldness and this attitude you have, is there like a particular person or people or artist that kind of took you, you know, under their wing and was like, this is how you do it. Or was it just gradually like things that you just picked up from everywhere and was just like, all right, this is who I am. I feel like God allowed me to not have that because I'm called to be that for somebody else. I have an incredible family and they believed in me and poured into me. I have incredible friends who are locked in on this journey. And there's a lot of artists that I've been inspired by musically, but I never had that one artist who was like, let me show you the ropes. I had to figure mm -hmm. it out. Also, I'm called to something that I don't believe has been done. And there's a very specific route that I'm called to take. And there's going to be a lot of hits that you got to take on that journey. So I feel like God has called me to be, you know, on social media, in the songs, at concerts, be that figure to everybody else. Like, look, this is how you do it. I'll be very outspoken about, you know, this is how you avoid temptation. This is how you stay focused. This is how you're disciplined. This is how you put God first. Right. Like, I'll talk about all of that because I really do wish that at times there was like this, you know, this one artist who was like, here, let me show you the ropes. But God has called me to be a king and, and to lead. And my prayer someday is my music will have done that for this generation. Yeah, man, that's, that's great. And, you know, I don't, I don't mean this in a negative way, but I feel like, you know, you have your CHH community and the, and the artists and everything. And I feel like you've always been a little bit outside of it, in it, but a little bit outside. But You're I think, right. but that's kind of allowed you, right, to find this path. And I, I, I always say when people are like, aren't you concerned about what this website is doing? Or are you paying attention to what other people are doing? And it's just like, I got love for those people, but I have so much that's consuming my attention that I can't worry about exactly. you know, what another website or what other types of media are doing. You know, I'm trying to build what I'm building. And yes. that, that seems to kind of be the lane that you're in. A hundred percent brother. And it discouraged me at times because that's a real thing, but I feel like God has brought me outside of the circle to lead a circle, to be on a different path. Um, everybody is called to different things and you can't look at everybody else and wonder what they're doing. Exactly. Like you said, my sister ran track for a while and there was an Olympic gold medalist who trained her uh, for a season. And he gave this advice to her for track that I use in life. And I think it's genius. He said, you want to know the quickest way to lose a race? Look behind you or look beside you. I feel like it's the same thing in life. If you keep looking back at your past, you won't be able to see the finish line. And if you're so worried about other runners, you're going to slow down. I fix my eyes on the author and perfecter of my faith. I fix my eyes on Jesus. I fix my eyes on the finish line. I will run and not grow weary, walk and not be faint. I'm in the center of his will, right? And if that's what we're doing, you're doing it in your lane. I'm doing it in my lane. Every believer listening, everybody who's new to this or been doing it for 30 years, walk in that calling and God will sustain you and everything else will fall into place. And the insecurity that I walk through, the, the pain that I walk through from being an outsider goes back to what I told you about as a kid, you know, that rejection, that one being left out, everybody's in on the joke, everybody's at the party and I'm not there, but God has called me to be that outsider. So I can look you in the eyes and say, I understand. I know how it feels, but promise you, I promise you this, that God has a plan for your life to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope in the future. 
And if you don't embrace insecurity, but you embrace confidence, knowing that God is going to take care of you, everything else will fall into place. That's good, man. That's good. And let me ask, how, how old are you right now? 24. 24. Okay. So if the Zonti that just finished mm. recording, God taught me. Oh, I love this. You stepped out of the booth. And wow. what what would he say about the Zonti that you are now if if he was able to get a glimpse? I'm not gonna lie, this this is making me tear up a little bit, bro, if I'm being honest. Um there's a song on We Already Won, um, called Do It Too, and there's this lyric. If I met younger me, I'd be his hero. I really live every day, man. And I promise you this. You can hear the passion in my voice. I live every day being the artist that younger me would have needed. There were so many times where I wanted to give up on my faith or on my art. Even before God taught me, I, I almost didn't put the video up. That morning, I almost called you guys and like, hey, like maybe it's not ready. There's so many times where I've wanted to quit. So many times I felt weak. So many times I felt discouraged or not enough. And God has sustained me. And I feel like if I saw Zonti now, you know, the artist with the Johnny Dang grills and the tattoos and the chain on, but he's talking about Jesus Christ and he's not changing the lyrics and he's in the rooms praying with these artists and he's unafraid and he's rocking out stages and doing his second tour. Like, you know how confident that would have made me as a young artist? Like, this is possible. Everything that's in my heart, I can go do it. And every time I talk to a listener, every time I talk to a zealot after a show or in the comments and they're like, you are motivating me and inspiring me to be all in for my calling. That fuels me, bro. That's why I'm doing this because younger me didn't have the exact artist that he needed. And that's why God designed this path for me to be that for so many others. So I know that if I met younger me and if Zonti in 2017 finished GTM and was looking at Zonti 2024, he would he would be in shock, and I guarantee I would have had Zonti posters in my room. <laughs> now, what about now? What about what's what's something that you know now mm. that you wish you would have known back then? Wow, there's so much stuff, bro. Um, business wise and life wise, they're very different categories. I think business wise, um, I would say brand is everything. Uh, on the business side one of the things that I knew early on was what I was supposed to look like, what I was supposed to sound like. And I had to go through a season of negotiating with that brand with people and letting it be changed and letting it be affected by opinions. And then I learned through that process to now go into the big leagues and say, this is who I am and I'm not changing. So again, God with kind of lower stakes allowed me to learn lessons and I'm very grateful yeah. for it. But I'll tell every artist now, if you know who you are, or you know what you're supposed to do, go with that gut, especially if you're tapped into God and you're hearing the Holy Spirit saying, this is the way walking it, right? So brand is so important and not like, oh, I got a brand because I'm a business. I'm talking about your identity as an artist. It has to be very clear. And once you know it, stand on it. That's what I'm building right now. That's who God's superstar is. I'm showing the world it's possible to win and to win for God. And uh, from the spiritual standpoint, I feel like really just move out of the way. That's the biggest key that I've seen in all of this. There's been times where I've spent literal weeks like losing sleep, brainstorming ideas, trying to figure out the perfect strategy, studying content, writing songs, and I'm stuck. God taught me it was the same story. I literally was, I was stuck. What's my first single going to be? And then I just prayed, all right, Jesus, I surrender. I move out of the way. Use me. And I woke up at 3.34 in the morning with a melody. When they asked me how I did it, I say, God taught me. The next day, the song was done in an hour and a half. And that's the version you hear today in my bedroom, right? And the rest of my career, anytime that I've struggled, it's because I'm trying to do it on my strength. A Toyota Camry is not meant to pull a U-Haul trailer. That's not how it works. You're not designed to be a source. So if you say, move me out of the way, Holy Spirit, do your thing. Like, give me the words for this song. Give me the strategy for this content. I promise you, if you wait on the Lord, he'll show up. And if it takes you three weeks, do it. That three weeks of waiting on him will be better than 20 weeks of you striving and doing your best on your own. So if you stand firm on who you're supposed to be as an artist without compromise, and then you move out of the way and let God design that artist, everything else will be perfect because you're going to him for the game plan and then you are not changing the game plan. That's what I would leave for any artist or anybody in any field. Get the game plan, stand on it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Now, how do you, how do you feel about the song God taught me like all these years yeah. later? 
Or do you do you get sick of it? Do you think you'll get sick of it? Are you are you just like eh. I think about all these bands like these legacy bands like Yeah, you know you and mentioned they got Bono a little bit. like U two's been playing Sunday Bloody Sunday for forty years and a bunch of other songs just, or their biggest hits like Linkin Park playing In the End like okay Yeah. yes you know we like you like this song it's what made us famous but we've we've played it two thousand times over the last twenty years do you do you ever get that? Do you ever get that feeling with God taught me or is it more like this is the song that elevated me to where I'm at. So I always got to have it. Yeah. By the way, bro, before I answer the question, this is awesome. Like your questions are incredible and this conversation Thank you, man. is so fun. So thank Thank you you. for, thank you for this. I'm having a blast. I think people are going to really benefit from this conversation. Yeah. Um, to answer your question, I think God has a sense of humor. Cause like the, the song that, put me on the map is literally when they ask me how I did it, I say, God taught me. So I can, I can never get confused about who the source is. It's literally what we just talked about. Like God knew like the one that went off first, it had to be very clear that he was the one getting the glory. So I love that. I don't get tired of it. I think um, earlier in my career, I used to be tired of songs over and over. Cause you listen to them hundreds of times in the creation process then on tour, then every time you're in the car with somebody, they put on your music. If they know you make music. So, Obviously, you start to get tired of it, but there was a moment that shifted my perspective. Um, when I went out and did shows and started talking to people who had listened to the songs, you realize like the reason they want that to close, it's not because, oh, yeah, it's a popular song. They have a, a life moment attached to it. It's valuable to them. And then it shifted for me because it went from, oh, you know, I'm tired of these songs. Listen to the new stuff. Like, no, I do this now. I make this new song now to like just like these are all landmarks in my journey, that song, they had a specific relationship they were in, a job they were at, uh, a trauma that they overcame, a struggle they went through, a victory they celebrated, a summer that they remember with their homies in the car, like whatever it is, right? They have a vivid depiction of what that song means to them the same way we do as consumers of music. I got memories to certain songs. I have moments to certain songs. So I feel like it gave me the grace to be like, you know what, I'm never going to be tired of performing this music. It's just my job on the front end to make sure if it releases, I love it. You know, that's where I got to be a stickler in the studio. I spent 13 hours per single um, on, on each of these albums in the mixing and, and the, the finalizing process, because I got to make sure I love it because it's going to be out there forever. So that, you know, when somebody plays it or I'm playing it for the thousandth time on stage, you know, I don't get tired of it. I even did it literally when I was in Houston, man, we tapped in and I went to Space City Church and saw Pastor Vaughn Juan, and uh, he surprised me. He was like, hey, could you come up stage and do God Taught Me? And I was ready to go right there. Like, all right, bet. no one, I'm ready. Because, you know, I make music for a living, bro. I should be grateful. I can't stand when artists are complaining about, oh, my song, I've heard it a million times, or I got to perform, or I got to meet these fans. Bro, you do music for a living. That's like the dream. You know what I mean? Always have an attitude of gratitude. So I've learned to love it and gotten over any... Uh, any being tired of it because like people love this music so i'm just grateful for that yeah i i always say an artist is only as good as the the album that the person listening got into mm. so so if if your first album was the the first album that your fan got into zonti to them mm. no matter what you put out oh nothing was as good as that that first yeah, album that's, that's but a then really smart and take and man you think about it from yourself thinking about like bands or artists that you listen to that first thing that grabbed you and like you said it, it's kind of a time capsule it brings you back to this place Yeah. I have all these bands i used to listen to like when i was a teenager and stuff and i'm like oh that album's amazing and it's the only album i listened to by them and they have like And eight that's other your albums watermark. Yeah, they have either other albums and they're always like, well, this next album is my best album. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I like that first one when you were like 17 years old and <laughs> didn't know how to write Yeah, a song yet. that's really, dude, that's a good take. I've never thought about it that way, but that makes so much sense. I'm the same way with artists that I've listened to. So thank you for that wisdom, bro. It'll give me even more grace when somebody's loving the music that they discovered first. Yeah, so this next album, uh, your last album, whatever album comes first, someone's going to hear it for the first time. And No matter what you do for the rest of your career, that's that's the album that they're in, that they're in on. Um, man, I, I think we covered a lot. Is is there is there anything else you want to say, plug, let the people know? Yeah, I would just say, please be part of this journey. I mean, you know, everybody here who's going to watch this, come with me. 
I'm not trying to leave us behind. This is, I want to be the guy like, let's go. Like, we're going to go take over the industry. Jesus, you're going to see me at award shows and in rooms with secular artists and in conversations and hanging out with celebrities and doing podcasts. And I'm going to be the guy that's screaming Jesus from the rooftops. And I want all of us to go take that space over together. Our generation in general is tired of not having an answer. They want the truth. They're longing for it. Even that last post I put up, there's people commenting like, man, uh, you know, this generation's hungry for Jesus. You can see it. The people that you would least expect are asking, they're begging for an answer. We just have to have the courage to bring it to them. So my takeaway, you know, obviously I'm at Zonti on everything you can follow and support, but really in the shows, I mean, we got tickets at Zonti.com shows coming up. I'm going on tour again in the summer, but all of that leads to one call to action, which is just be part of the journey. This is a movement. It's a revolution. Since 2017, I've been saying, live the revolution. This is a movement. It's a family. And we, all of us in our own environments coming together are going to take over the world for the kingdom. Cause that's what we're called to do as believers. And I'm on fire about it, man. I'm passionate about it. And if you remember one thing that I say, Everybody who watches this, everybody who listens under the sound of my voice, remember this. You have stories only you can tell and gifts only you can give. Your survival is proof to someone else that they can make it. And if you don't stand up and share that story, whether it's at work, through music, with your family, whatever your calling is, if you hide that talent, if you hide that story, then somebody who needs you won't find you and your pain will be for no reason. So it's your responsibility to take your gifts and your stories and put them together, give them to the world. You matter to God. You're loved by God. You have a purpose. And all of us are God's superstar. All of us are in our own environments, being the light of the world. We follow Jesus and the world will know the God we follow. Let's go. Bam, bam. And there you have it, everybody. Man, it's been a long time coming, but yes, well, well worth the wait. This, yeah. this, was, this was super dope, man. I think you're also the only person I've ever interviewed who was standing up the entire time. Dude, like, I'm you're ready. Just, you're, like, you're like ready to jump Let's out. Go. I, oh, I man. Had a chair and I was like, man, I'm too hyped for this. This chair's got to go. And I threw it to the side. No, it, it makes it, you know, just from camera angles, whenever the camera is pointing up at someone, it makes them look like they're larger than life. They're a little <laughs> intimidating. So you're like, you're like, you're like giving a message. So no, it, it's, it's dope.